Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to access WebLogic LDAP data in your application. This is often necessary because you need to know who's logging in and what roles they have. And oftentimes, this information is stored in an LDAP. You don't want to have it repeated in a database somewhere when uh, most companies these days have that level of information in an LDAP and you need to grab it. So we're going to use the uh, internal WebLogic LDAP that has uh, been provided with uh, WebLogic and use that to uh, show how it works. Now in a previous video, I showed how to set up a user and groups and set up the attributes for that user. And you can watch that video uh, and find it on the YouTube channel. This is me, uh, Stuart Fleming, and these are all the attributes that I've set for myself. I'm also in the manager group. Um, here we have some Java. Uh, oh, also in another video, we went over how to access some of that information from EL. And you can see here that I am not authenticated. And it's funny how in design time, it will actually show up and uh, my username is anonymous well because I haven't logged in so it is interesting how that works but today video we're going to be going over um, first of all I'm going to give a little introduction in what utilities are uh, these are helper classes that you might find useful in your application uh, these two are written by uh, Duncan Mills and Steve Minch and uh, like uh, most people, I stole them from some Oracle application uh, example or tutorial. So uh, you can look for the internet on the internet for these. Uh, I have created my own LDAP utils uh, so that, uh, and this is also recommended. It's recommended that you create your own uh, so that you know what's in there and you use what you need. Uh, the ADF utils has a lot of stuff that you may not need at first when you're first starting out. This one is used for accessing the WebLogic uh, LDAP, and uh, it gets a user profile. And I'm using this in other examples, so I created a, a class that I could just grab it, and some of these other classes use that. So for example, this one is using this. Okay, So I rather than write it multiple times, I'm just writing it once and returning it to the to here and you can see that I'm creating a user and, and getting this method. Okay, so here we have we're getting the ADF context. From the context we're getting the security context and from the security context we're getting the user profile. Now and then we're returning it. Now you could also write it like this and that's one of the interesting things about how Java works. If you note that um, this is a security context but it's also this, this is a method here, we're, we're pulling a method, but it's also an object and that allows us to do this sort of thing. Um, so we could just write it like this instead and you'll see it sometimes like this and wonder what the heck. Uh, it's a little bit confusing when you're first beginning, but uh, it makes sense after a while because we aren't playing with this or we aren't playing with this in this uh, very much. So why don't we just write it like this and let me just show you so i'm going to erase that and i'll do get and you can look and see that there's a whole bunch of things here we're getting the security context then we're getting and uh, i don't remember if it's the user profile here but you can get the principal or you can get the roles and one of the other ones we look at i'm getting this one instead so in this case i'm getting the, the roles and uh, i'm just re excuse me returning it in this particular case, um, I have a user, and uh, I could do things like get particular types of fields that are in the uh, LDAP, or if I just want to hand it the field, I could say, hey, you know what, I want the display name, and I'm passing that in as a string. And it'll check and see if it's there, it'll return zero if it's not, or it'll turn a value. In this particular case, I'm trying to see if the person's in a role. We have the dot get security context and get role. I think it's get role. Oh boy. There we go. Get roles. Okay. And uh, I'm just then iterating through that role and writing it out. 
In this one, I'm just testing, and you can see that you know here I'm doing get GUI ID, uh, and that will return a particular long string. I might be getting the email. Uh, whoops, looks like I made a mistake up here. Uh, it looks like I need to put a extra parentheses there because it's excuse me there. So now that's fixed. All right, so in this case, uh, we are getting a map, and we're getting all of the profiles, or all of the attributes into this map, and then we're just iterating through that, and we'll just do map entry, and then writing out what those are. So this is very similar to uh, this one, except for this is roles. And uh, this one's kind of interesting, because it does fail on me. I've tried to put some uh, catch statements in here and try catch statements to see if I could catch it. Um, I have not yet, but uh, I thought I'd enter it in, 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 in anyways and show it in the video because it does work. It just fails when it works. So in this case, I'm sending the user display name to Dingbat, and here it is, Stuart Fleming. So this might provide some fun for you while you're on your job. Um, so let's see. Now the other thing that I'm doing first is is I'm creating a welcome name, and uh, let's see, I don't know if I have. Yeah, I, actually, I don't want to have this here. I'm going to have it in my user profile here. This is rather interesting because this is a string that I define, and I have a getter and a setter for it. And here's the getter. And I basically say, hey, look, if this string is null, then, uh, well, first of all, it says start up. I can put this right here. Starting up there, that makes better sense. If it's null, then what I'd like you to do is uh, check the LDAP utilities and uh, get the user display name. OK, so let's take a look at our view. And uh, you can see that I have welcome XXX here. I want to change that to the welcome sign that I just showed you. So what we're going to do is come over to here, get the expression builder open, and take a look in here in the ADF manage beans. And you cannot see anything here. So what I need to do is look at the ADFC config. This is a task flow. And every task flow has an area where you can specify the managed beans that the pages on that task flow can access. So I'm going to call this user, user data bean. OK. And I am going to be lazy. And, and this is user data. OK, so I'm going to come over here and type user data. It does show up there. And uh, you kind of have to click around for it to save properly. But once we go back to our page and wait, OK, now we can come over here and we accept the expression. And look, under the request scope, there is this value. All right, And under there, we have the welcome username. So let's get rid of that. Put a space in there so that we have some space. And let's run this. OK, first of all, I'm going to check and see if it needs to be undone. We'll run it. OK, we have a login page that I've set up. And you can see down here that, ooh, welcome. Hmm. Actually, this was to be expected um, because uh, this is a request uh, maybe a page flow will be work will work better. Scopes are important. They work only for the period of time that you have that being set for. So it's a, got a very short lifespan. A, a page flow scope has a longer lifespan. And I created a video on that, although I did have some very odd behavior with the risk request scope in that video. Uh, so let's change this now and go back to our view. And take a look. And 
Um, I just want to make sure. Did that save? Okay, it did save. And this now, if we come over here, I'm actually surprised that this is still showing because um, since we have now changed it to a request scope, it's no longer in the request scope area. This is what we really want to access, and this is the value we want to access. Okay, now note also that this user being here, actually, we'll, we'll take a look at it here. The page flow scope user data being refers to not the actual Java class, but what we man what we set and registered in the in the ADFC task flow. Okay, so now we should be able to run this. Just uh, undeploy it. and run. We have our login. Hey, look, we got starting up. Where did that come from? It came from right there. And what I like about this is that it allows you to, excuse me, that's the wrong page. It allows you to uh, have something set up and instantiate it and run some code before you really get to the web page. Um, you can uh, run other things here uh, that might need to be set into the uh, page flow scope or request scope or something like that. So you can basically use this as a startup for a page, which is pretty cool. So I think this is going to be the end of this video. And um, I'd like you to join me for the next video, which will talk about accessing more of these information pieces of information from the LDAP.